Very good. Myra, Peter, thanks. All right. Elsewhere, California is still touting uh, successful renegotiations of some eight long-term power deals. Kim McNicholas now. She's live there in the West Coast Bureau. Some perspective uh, from Wall Street on those deals. Kim? Yes, well, we've got a lot to talk about, so let's get right to it. We have the CEO of Sabre Partners, Joseph Fichera, joining us live from the MX in New York. Joseph, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for inviting me. California's long-term power deals, a win-win situation? Yes, I think both sides got something in, in, the, in the arena negotiations, which was the only way that that was going to come about. Um, I think the, the generators got some certainty in, re, in re, uh, elimination of any more retrospective review, and there were some nominal dollar cost savings and some greater flexibility on the part of the state, uh, though there was a basic shifting in terms of risk from uh, the contractors to the ratepayers in the re re renegotiation by having the ratepayers take more of the cost of fuel um, gas prices and making it a fixed price to a, a uh, paying the cost of, of, of fuel in the contract. And if your forecast is right, which is what the, I think the, uh, the PUC and others are thinking that gas prices will remain low for the foreseeable future, the ratepayer will benefit. If it goes wrong, the ratepayer will cost. And you look back at the crisis and you might say that the one thing we learn from history is we don't learn from history is that uh, forecasts and deregulation in 1996 didn't pan out in the year 2000. So the question still remains, you know, that upside protection, is there any upside protection at all? Well, I think that there, there's still a basic in terms of being able to get power in these contracts. Yeah, they will be reliable. Um, there are capacity payments and there will, there, there will not be a, a shortages. I mean, the that we would have the same that uh, in the year 2000, 2001. Uh, the question is the, is the price. But fundamentally, the contract term has remained the same. Uh, the prices did not change much. And what we got here was the establishment of a benchmark by which we could have further negotiations of the, con of the remaining contracts. Uh, we got away from this uh, extremist point of view of simply abrogating the contracts, walking away from them, a position that the PUC uh, took, which was really not, uh, from some, I think, partially Wall Street's perspective, not in the best interest of the, of the ratepayer or the business environment. We now have something in which we can shoot at, something that uh, both sides can work towards. And that's what FERC has actually told them that they should do. They're not going to intervene anytime soon. They would like to see a negotiated settlement, and I think they're on the path towards that. So one more thing, just on a separate note, the state's energy bond sale, we've talked about this a number of times before, um, we're getting closer. Is there any excitement stirring up in the investment community at all? I know that we had talked about concerns in regards to the PUC and some hesitancy with that. Well, absolutely. That still remains a big concern on the part of, of, of the Wall Street community, is which is uh, how the... Uh, the credibility of the PUC will remain with in, in investors in terms of always being willing to set rates in order to pay, make sure that the bonds will be, be paid. Uh, the rating agencies are key in this whole fact. They have yet to speak. They're under intense pressure in this industry right now for uh, the ratings that they have signed to other uh, energy providers. And where we're here in California, uh, the rating agencies will really be the benchmark from which everyone will look and then investors will probably put a haircut on that because there's still skepticism in terms of the political environment in California about ultimate repayment. Thank you so much, Joseph, for joining us. Okay, thank you. I've been talking with Joseph Ajara. He is the CEO of Sabre Partners. Jay, back to you.